clients and a large family, I've learned a few things along the way. And one of the major lessons I've learned is how to get all the kids involved in homeschooling so I'm not the only one carrying the load. Hi, fellow homeschoolers. I am excited to share with you my tips for involving all the kids in your homeschool day. Before we dive into the topic, I wanted to introduce myself and give you all of my homeschool mom credentials. I am the rebel mom behind lifeunbox.blog, which is a mompreneur's guide to raising kids, running a business, and keeping your sanity. Most days, that is. So I was working from home and homeschooling my kids before it was even cool. I am a homeschool mom of six. The first litter is 18, 16, and 14. The second litter is 10, 7, and 4. As of this year, I have officially homeschooled every single grade, most of them at least twice, and I am also a homeschool graduate. So my accumulated experience is like 25 to 30 years, but I'm really not that old. And then to top it all off, I also run two businesses, a virtual assistant business at jodyrperry.com, and I'm the digital, digital creator at lifeunbox.blog. So one of the things that really helped figuring out how to juggle it all was learning to delegate to all of my kids. Now, I know the common misconception when it comes to large families is that the older kids are raising the younger kids. And to avoid it appearing that way, mom always takes on everything. Or we feel guilty asking the older kids to help. Let me be the rebel mom here because that's what I do best. Involving your kids in your family is not delegating your parental responsibility to them. We all live here. We are all a part of this family. We all contribute as members. And everyone benefits from the contribution of everyone else. You know what they say, many hands make light work. So here are a few benefits of involving all of your kids in your homeschool. Number one, you are teaching them responsibility. This is a lesson all parents want their kids to learn. Making them responsible for certain areas of your homeschool is a great way to do it, especially if it is for a younger sibling. When other humans are involved, kids tend to take the responsibility a little bit more seriously, hopefully anyway. Number two, One person isn't carrying the entire load. Now, we are still moms, so we will still carry that mental load or that mental to-do list in our heads, but it does help when we can spread out that mom mental load. So I work in homeschool at the same time, so I need a lot of help from everyone, and it really is the only way that I can do both. Number three, kids have an opportunity to bond. Any mom of a large family will tell you that age gap is hard. You know, we range from veggie tales on one end of the spectrum and Star Wars on the other. So involving the older kids in the homeschool of the younger kids gives them a greater opportunity to bond with each other and build relationships. I know this all sounds really good, but how do we practically do it? Well, I am glad you asked because I love practical steps. So let's get into it now. Now, I know you're thinking, but she has teenagers. But keep in mind, I didn't always have teenagers. When we started homeschooling, my oldest was 11 and I only had four kids. So oh, how things can change. I have homeschooled in many different seasons, nursing babies, running toddlers running around, you know, all of the seasons that you can possibly cover as a mom, I have done it. So I want you to apply these steps to the season you are in. Because one thing we can always rely on with seasons is that they will change. So step one, you want to create a routine. So whatever season of life you are in, this is going to be your main tool in your mom bag. A routine is not a rigid schedule, but a flexible system of getting all those day-to-day tasks done. A routine will bend to ambulance rides and fire extinguisher involved science experiments. 
you know, the normal mom stuff. And trust me, you will be cleaning that fire extinguisher dust up for days. Don't ask me how I know. Creating a routine is going to get all of your kids involved in the day-to-day happenings. When it comes to a large family, everyone needs to be involved. They need to be invested in the outcome of the day. This is also a tool that helps to teach teach them responsibility for their attitudes and actions. Mm, Yes. (laughs) Whether it's a good day or a bad day, it is up to them. A routine also sets your day on autopilot. So even my four-year-old knows what to do next. And she did when she was three, too. You know, two, you know, that's pushing it a little bit. If creating a routine is new to you, then just start with your morning routine. So here is a very brief process on how to start. Number one, you want to create two routines. So you want to create a morning routine for yourself and for your kids. So yes, there will be overlap between the two, but you as the mom will have things to do and the kids are going to have things to do that are separate from you. So ask yourself, do you want uh, do you want to get up before your kids? What are you going to do during this time? Is this quiet time, writing time, or work time? For your kids, what should they do first? Do you want them to make their beds, get dressed? This is optional in our house. PJs are fine for school. Eat breakfast right away, right away. Do read alouds. What do you want them to do? in the morning. So once you've answered those questions, the next step is to set your expectations. In order for a morning routine to work well, everyone needs to understand what is expected. Everyone needs to be clear on what the routine is. Set your expectations, adjust them as needed, and watch everyone flourish. It is amazing what can be accomplished when expectations are crystal clear. Number three, Give yourself time to implement it. So anything you do is going to take time. I know we all want quick wins and successes. That is the same for me. But be patient with yourself and your kids. If something isn't working, then change it. Create a flexible morning routine that works for you and your family. Again, implementing this will depend on the age of your kids, how motivated they are to learn, and you know, if they want to test you on anything, but it doesn't need to be complicated. It just needs to be a set of repeated actions. Once your kids understand the expectations, they will take off. So that was, so creating a routine for your day is step one. Step two is facilitate subjects. Okay, one of the reasons I sent my older kids, so the four oldest were sent to school at the beginning of their school careers, if you can call them that. Um, But one of the reasons I sent my older kids to school for those first few years is because I worked in a regular nine to five job. Even with working from home, you know, that's what I'm doing now. I never felt I had the time to really invest in the younger years. So my plan has always been, I will send the kids to school for at least kindergarten and first grade because those grades just seem so overwhelming to me. Well, then we all know what happened a few years ago. COVID hit. So yes, I am a COVID homeschooler too. I've covered everything (laughs) in my homeschooling career. I have done it all. Um, So my fourth child was going to kindergarten at the time and suddenly he was home. Thankfully, we were almost finished with the school year. So now I had the summer to watch and figure out what I was going to do. So all summer, the school kept changing their start date. And that was the final straw for me. I wasn't going to send my kid to school just to end up homeschooling him and following somebody else's schedule. So I decided he was going to be homeschooled too. So two weeks before we were starting school, I was scrambling to put his curriculum together for the school year. So like I said, with seasons, we can rely on them to change. So my best laid plans were out the window and I was still left with a question, how was I going to homeschool a first grader and work from home and homeschool everyone else with the newborn? We had a lot going on that year. 
So in the midst of trying to find our new routine, I had one of those mom moments, you know, the ones where you're like totally surprised by your own genius. And it was to get all three of the older kids involved with helping the first grader, but not, it wasn't going to be random or on the fly. What I did is I assigned each of the older kids one subject to help him with. So the oldest did reading with him, my second son did my story, and my daughter did spelling. I did the rest or he did it on his own. So this really spread the load amongst all of us. And by assigning each child, each of the older kids one subject, he knew where to go to ask questions and he knew who to go to when he was ready for the subject. And also the older kids knew exactly how to facilitate the subject they were helping him with. There wasn't any guesswork from day to day. And I wasn't answering questions every five seconds. <laughs> and this streamlined the day for everyone. The older kids could plan around helping him. And the expectations were very clear and easy for, for all of them to meet. So kids are more than capable of helping to facilitate subjects for younger siblings. Okay, so we talked about a routine. We talked about getting kids involved in facilitating uh, subjects. And now the third and final step is to create independent learners. Now, this is my favorite one. Teach your kids to be independent learners because teaching your kids to be independent is going to set them up for success for the rest of their lives because I can't teach them everything. But if I can teach them how to find that right answer, then I have done my job as their parent and teacher. Now, I know independent learning, this sounds like a contradiction to involving all of your kids in homeschooling, but it isn't. This teaches your kids to take responsibility for their learning and in turn, it also involves them in the decision-making process of picking a curriculum. I've always told my kids, school is non-negotiable, but they do have input in what they learn. Because if you're going to give your kids the responsibility of their learning, then they also need the privilege of having input in the decision. There needs to be a reward. And I've always found that my kids are motivated to do schoolwork that they've picked or at least had input on. So it makes them invested in their learning. Over the years, the older kids have picked subjects to do together. They have also requested completely different curriculum. So involving my kids in this stage of the process motivates them to do well in our homeschool. It also eliminates the need for me to keep them motivated. I rarely need to tell my kids to do school and that trickles down to my first grader. He doesn't offer input at this point, but he sees the example of his older siblings and he follows it. Now I know this is a lot of information and a number of action points. So my, the best advice I can give you is just start with one. For me, I hear something like this and I want to start everything right now. Don't be like me or you will easily get overwhelmed and give up. Just ask me how I might know. So start with something simple like creating your morning routine. Start small and get a win. Now, I would love to connect with you, whether that is through the Life Unboxed blog podcast, YouTube, or social media. Here's the one place to find it all, and that is lifeunbox.blog. Land on the homepage, and you will see the links to connect on all the platforms. I look forward to connecting with you in all of these other spaces, and lifeunbox.blog is all about how to, how to juggle homeschooling and working from home and everything in between. So hop on over, and I will see you there.